Hey guys, this is the hike to the Goat Canyon trestle. And there is the trestle to prove it. Now this hike starts um, east of San Diego, kind of close to the Mexican border. It's an eight mile out and an eight mile back. So 16 mile total hike to get here to Goat Canyon trestle, which is allegedly the world's largest curved wooden trestle. Now, I can't confirm that. I've also heard it been called the world's largest trestle. I don't know, it's big. It's about 200 feet high, I think about 700 or so feet long. It's a huge trestle and it's part of a railway line that's not used anymore called the Impossible Railway that was built between the 1920s and 1930s through this very spectacular desert canyon. Now, the hike for a lot of the way follows the railroad tracks, but don't, don't let that get you uh, discouraged from the hike. It's a really beautiful hike. The scenery around here, the terrain is spectacular. It is spectacular. Now, two things. First, obviously you don't do this in the middle of the summer when it's hot out. It's in the middle of the desert, it's exposed aside from the tunnels that you have to pass through, um, which I'll show you in a second. So not a good time for that, for the, the summer, not a good summertime hike. That's what I meant to say. The other thing is that you're not allowed to do this hike, at least legally. This is all private property. And if you look at a map, you'll see that the private property runs through public land and you'll see no trespassing signs all over. So you're not allowed to do this hike. It is pretty dangerous. You're hiking on old railroad tracks when you're crossing the different bridges. Um, you really have to watch your feet, your footing when you're walking across it. It's not a maintained trail. It is dangerous, so do with that information what you may, um, but just a heads up, this is not a hike that you're allowed to do. So um, with that said, if you wanna do the hike, please don't just watch this video, go to hikingguy.com where I have a full guide that really goes into depth on what to expect here. And I also have a 360 video. There's links to both those things right under the video here. Um, but the 360 video, I'll show you what it's like to walk across the trestle, walk through some of the tunnels, in 360, you can pan around the video. So if you're apprehensive about what the experience is like, or if you're scared of heights, it's a good way to kind of preview it before you go. Now, if you find this video helpful, if you could do me a big favor and click the little thumbs up on YouTube, what that does is it helps other people find this video. And my goal with this video is to arm people with information to do this hike safely, which they're not allowed to do. I'll reiterate that. Um, but by clicking on that little thumbs up, you kind of pass it on and hopefully people can watch this and know whether to uh, try it or not try it based on their comfort level with the conditions. So with all of that mumbo jumbo and legal disclaimer junk said, um, let me show you how to hike here. All right, so from the parking area, just gonna go across the road and go down to the tracks. Now the parking can be a little bit tricky, so uh, just make sure you check the guide. I'll keep it updated with the current conditions. But once you get down to the tracks, we're just gonna make the right. And you don't have to walk on the tracks, on the railroad ties. You can walk alongside of it on this trail that goes most of the way, which is much easier than walking on the tracks. We're gonna avoid these little side trails to the right. Um, those go down to the nudist resort and other places before we get there where you can park. Now on the left, there is a cross with the number 143. I have no idea what that is. And if for some reason you do know, can you please leave me a comment? I'd be interested to hear what that's all about. And then right away, we're gonna to come to a bridge. There's a little artwork on there. There's a lot of that on the trains, but this will give you a taste of what crossing the trestles is like. You can see some of the railroad ties are missing. There's a lot of dry rot. So just be careful as you go across this and get a feel for it. And just under a mile, we're gonna to come to um, Dubber Spur, and these are Metra uh, gallery cars. They're double-decker passenger cars that have been spray painted. There's a nice, neat little history that I'll put on the guide, but you can go in there and check them out. Uh, they came all the way from Chicago. They were gonna run as a tourist train and also as a commuter train in Mexico, but they instead came here and got tagged up and then once you're done here, we're just going to go back um, a little ways down until you get to this intersection and see a trail off to the right, which is right there. It's right before tunnel number five, which is just ahead. Tunnel number five is blocked. Sometimes people squeeze in there. You can climb up around it. There's a bit of a scramble, but instead I prefer to just do this detour, which was that trail to the right that I just showed you. 
We're going to be walking along the train tracks for almost the whole way. So getting on a trail trail is a nice little break uh, on this hike. And we're going to go around until we get to this junction right here. We're going to make the left. Somebody's marked it with a piece of metal. We're going to go left over here and keep going around. It's basically going to do a loop around to the left to rejoin the tracks after the tunnel. Another piece of metal. You can see there's a trail ahead. The easier trail is to go down to the right and continue down a more gradual gradient down here to the railroad tracks once again. When you go down a little bit, you're going to see them kind of emerge in front of you there. There's another little trestle in the distance in the uh, Carrizo Gorge straight ahead. And we're just going to go down here and then rejoin the trail and keep hiking. And here you can see what the trail looks like for most of the way. It's this nice trail on the side with these, um, you know, nice views into the gorge. Now we're going to cross that trestle. And again, you can see that there's some holes in here. And I have some tips on the website on the, um, the conditions for these bridges and where it's where I think it's safest to cross them if you are apprehensive. I mean, I've seen people dive bomb across these. Some of them are metal. I've seen trail runners run across this metal. I've seen mountain bikes. It's sure it's fine, but there are places that are a little sketch. So just watch your step before you put your weight down as you go across these. And once you cross that last bridge in the distance, you're going to see the two um, tunnels way, way up there on that side of that gorge over there, what we're going to go by later or go through later. But before we do that, we're going to come over here and go through tunnel number six. And this is going to be your first tunnel. And most of the tunnels are short enough to allow daylight in, but it's going to help to have a headlamp as you go in here. The tunnels are pretty well reinforced. You can see there's beams up on top there. They built these actually higher because originally steam trains would go through and they wanted the high so the steam would blow out and it wouldn't so it wouldn't go over the people in the train. So they're pretty high, um, generally pretty safe, nice and cool as you go through. And the first one's a little sketchy if you've never done it before. And once you kind of do one or two, you'll be fine as you come out here. And out of that tunnel, the views into this gorge are incredible down there. You can see there's another little trestle. We're going to go over, I don't know, six, half dozen of those probably as we, as we continue down here. And shortly after that, you're going to see more passenger trains. These are actually from Montreal, the ones down there. And you can explore those too. And of course, they're covered in tags and graffiti and artwork as well. It is what it is, but you can check that out. Now these are from Montreal. I don't know the story about how they were purchased or how they got here. So if you know that, please just leave me a comment. I'd be interested to hear the story behind these guys, aside from the fact they're from Montreal. And then we're gonna keep going. Now the next tunnel, tunnel number eight, is blocked. You can see a dry waterfall over there, kind of neat. This tunnel is blocked over here and we're gonna do the um, basically route around it like we did for tunnel five. You can see it winding up there. And we're just going to go ahead and make that left and go up this trail. And this detour is about a mile as it goes around the mountain. It's really a beautiful part of the hike. Um, you kind of wrap around and get to see the gorge. And right when you start, I want you to look back to your left. You're going to see two box cars that have fallen off the tracks there. Now, I think this is from a 1983 derailment. There's also a 1953 derail derailment. It could be that. Uh, it's called the Coors Beer Derailment. There were two boxcars full of Coors Beer that went over the side. And years later, a hiker found some of the cans and drank one. And he said it tasted like fermented wine and dirt. So if you find a beer out here, that's what it is. We're going to continue around through all the cactus. Now, people mountain bike on this route a lot. And I have some info on mountain biking um, in the guide as well. But when you go here, there's some really narrow points. And I actually have a video of somebody crashing off of this cliff right here as we come back to rejoin the tracks ahead. And those are the tracks over there. And the, the crash is not mine, it's somebody else's. So you get to see somebody else crash. And when you rejoin the tracks, if you look back to your right, you're going to see the other end of Tunnel 8, which is not blocked. So when you're coming back, just make sure you don't walk in there. If you're tired or something, it's easy to maybe miss this turn and walk back up to the locked gate on the other side. You're going to want to just walk straight. Now this stretch has a succession of tunnels here. You can see there's a spray painted nine 
Each tunnel has a number that was given to it by the railroad. Um, when I refer to the tunnels in the guide, I refer to them by that number, not necessarily the number um, that you would reach sequentially as you hike. It's the tunnel number that railroad gives. And you can see the path is right next to the tracks there as we go through. And like I said, there is how many tunnels here? Five, five or six tunnels uh, kind of in quick succession as we go around here. And it's beautiful. You're basically in the middle of nowhere. Here's a little, little shelter. I don't know if that's for person or equipment. If you know, let me know. Be interested to know. A lot of interesting history with this railroad, and I'll talk about that in the guide. But basically, it goes through the states and Mexico on its way between Tijuana and uh, Yuma, who was the connector, the the East Coast connector for San Diego when it was built in 1919. Now this is a long tunnel. This is tunnel number 14. It's about half a mile long. It helps to have a headlamp in this one. Um, but again, it's basically the same as the others. Kind of cool, pretty uneventful as you go through, but this one is a little bit longer. And when you come out of this long tunnel, tunnel 14, you're gonna see a tunnel up ahead of you over there. To the left, you might see some trestles in the distance. Those are called the Seven Sisters, those trestles. They're just past Goat Canyon, so you're almost here. And we're actually not going to go in that tunnel straight ahead. That's the abandoned tunnel. When this railway was first built, the Goat Canyon trestle was not here. There was a tunnel. The tunnel got um, destroyed, so they built the track around here, and then they built Goat Canyon trestle um, to accommodate the ruined original track. Now, one last tunnel right here, and then we come out, and we are at Goat Canyon trestle. Now, when you first come to it here, it's not quite as impressive as you'd imagine because of the angle that you're at. If you really want to see it um, and it's cool, we're going to go over there where I just pointed. That's the best viewpoint there or back behind it to the right. Now, I have a 360 video where I walk across this bridge in entirety where you can pan around. So if you're apprehensive about the bridge, please check that out where you can kind of explore it on your own as I hike across. But it's about 700 feet long, about 200 feet up. It's actually um, wood because wood is the only thing that can withstand the temperature extremes here in the desert. And there's no nails in here. This is all just wood put together with the only metal being the railroad tracks that are on top. So pretty cool. There's also a catwalk that runs underneath um, that you can take. I've been taking that all the way across myself. If you have, let me know if that's uh, doable or not, or if there's holes in there. I'm not sure, but just take your time going across the trestle. And you don't have to go across. You can just come and see it as well, but you've come this far, I guess, right? And we're going to continue across the trestle to the other side. And there's a little primitive campsite straight ahead to the right. You can see there's a fire pit down there where people have camped and they made a little bench. The viewpoint is up to the left. You can also continue straight for as long as you want. There's tunnels and this kind of comes out the other side. On the right, there is a ballast car over there with a nice mural on it. And you'll notice above there, there's a tank car that was used for um, fire suppression. So if there was ever a fire here on the trestle, you could put it out with the water that's in that car. There's the mural, pretty cool mural painted on there, despite people tagging on top of it. And you can also go down to the catwalk right underneath. There's the tank car right up there. You can go to the walkway underneath over there. There's the other tunnel. You can see it in the distance. That's the one that was destroyed and that they um, got rid of. But yeah, you just enjoy this area, soak it all in, and then you just head back the way you came. And it's a long hike, so uh, just Watch your footing as you go back because it's easy to get tired. It's going to be 15, 16 miles. It's easy to get tired and uh, not be in control of your feet. So that's it. Cool stuff, huh? Cool, cool hike. Cool hike, but don't do it. Remember, this is not public property. It is illegal to trespass here. So this video is for entertainment only. Now, again, if you're watching on YouTube, if you could do me a big favor and just click the little thumbs up, thank you in advance for that. Please visit the article if you're considering visiting this area. Uh, it has a lot more information on what to expect when you're here. And uh, yeah, I'll show you a map of the hike and uh, kind of go over what it looks like in 3D. 
after this if you're interested in seeing what that's all about. But otherwise, I will see you out on the trails, trestles, tracks, and tunnels. Four T's. All right, see you guys. All right, so the hike starts right off of I-8 here. Here's Interstate 8. And we're gonna follow the trains, the railroad tracks up here. And it's really easy to look at in a satellite photo because you'll be able to see the trains going through the desert. Here's the nudist resort. I guess we could probably zoom in there, see some naked people, but right around a mile, we're gonna to come to our first landmark, which is Dubber Spur. And here are the abandoned rail cars that are from Chicago. Here's a trestle. Right after that, we're gonna to come to the blocked tunnel number five, which is right here. And here's the detour. You can see that was the junction I mentioned. We're gonna make the left-hand turn there and kind of loop around the railroad tracks. Now, if you do hop over here, if you do do the scramble and come back down around, you're gonna be on the train tracks and you're just gonna meet us back here at the Tunnel 5 detour. And from here, we're in the gorge. It's pretty neat. There's the mini trestle, um, but we're in the gorge. And the trail is around 500 feet above here. In general, it does go higher. I think in the old literature, it says speeding 900 feet above the gorge. But here we are following the gorge. Let me bring us around here. And then we have our first tunnel. Now, one thing to note is that when you plot the elevation on your GPS, it doesn't account for a tunnel. It'll basically plot it for the elevation. So you'll see that these lines go over top of the mountains, but in reality, we're going through the tunnels. And I've marked all of the tunnels on the map uh, so you can Check it out there. Here are the passenger cars from Montreal. Here's the Tunnel 8 detour. This is the tunnel that's blocked, this one through here. So we're gonna go all the way around the mountain and come back down to the tracks, down after Tunnel 8. Then after Tunnel 8, you have a succession of tunnels um, coming by here, 9, 10. You can see they come kind of one after another. They're not that long until you get to Tunnel 14 which is about a half a mile long. And if I zoom out here, you'll be able to see how far it is. So basically we're going from here all the way down to coming out over here. There's the end of the tunnel. And then quickly into tunnel 15 and then down to the trestle, which is right here. And if you walk around, here's the viewpoint. Um, there's primitive camping. You could obviously keep following the tracks up here and they continue. And that's actually another route to do the hike to come down from the north, um, but that's not in this guide. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, I just want to say once again, please be safe, be smart, and have fun responsibly if you go out there. But this is the hike. Definitely a bucket list experience. A uh, very cool spot.